Well, I'm down at my old stomping ground, the wreck, with an old mate of mine, former Bristol Ospreys and Wales coach, Sean Olley. With the Six Nations coming up, summer tours, and let's not forget the Rugby World Cup on the horizon in France. It's a great time to be a rugby fan. I'm looking forward to catching up with Sean about rugby, touring, playing days, and all things rugby. Hey, it's a great old day in Bath, but it's always nice to come back to the wreck, Sean, isn't it? It's always like this, to be honest. Could you know if you ever come to the wreck? Well, I preferred it was raining, slowed everybody down. Yeah, it did, yeah. But you've, done, you've had a bit of time down here, haven't you? Yeah. Brought sides here, played here in the young days? Yeah, I was lucky enough to play here, not the same standard as you, but uh, early 90s, came down with Rugby Lions and um, also Loughborough students, where I was studying, and uh, it was a hard game. And, uh, of course, latterly brought sides down with the Ospreys, Gloucester back in the day, the under the under twenty ones and uh, and Bristol. Great, oh, great Bristol great would have been a big derby. Yeah, big derby. Yeah, Bristol. But uh, Bath have always had the upper hand in recent times, haven't they, over Bristol? So uh, it was lucky with the the Ospreys. We had a great side, and we were fortunate to get the upper hand over Bath in a in a couple of games. I remember actually. Uh, it was one of Justin Tipperick's first games down here, and uh, well, he's turned out to be a great player. And uh, we put him in the back row with Jerry Collins and Philo Tia Tia, and uh, they did a job, that's for sure. Yeah, but you, coach, come on, how many appearances here? I've, well, lost, count, I've lost count, but I think I was, I think I'm somewhere around about the three, eight, five first team games here. But then remember, Sean, I had uh, sort of a year out with a knee injury, and then I got banned for a year. Well, and two other bands so yeah could have been would, 500 it, could have, it would have been up I think I'm, a, I'm the third highest first teamer but would have been the top if I'd have kept me fists in my pockets and didn't get that knee injury but best memory yeah the wreck uh, I, there's so many there's so many of them but you know I, how did wreck have changed just in itself you know the stands are twice as big uh, the stand, you know, it, but there's always been a huge passionate game here because it's a small ground. And back in the day, not so much this season, but back in the day, it was always worth sort of seven points to you, yeah. you know. But uh, the big derbies, I always remember. And remember, Sean, you know, back in the day, we'd play every Welsh club home and away. So t twice a week, we'd be playing regularly. Yeah. You know, my first cap was first cap, my first game for Bath was away at Pontypool front row of Faulkner Windsor Price yeah. and I was 17 and a half <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday night uh, it was a Wednesday night Wednesday night, Wednesday night. First, first sort of Wednesday in September so you know you come here and have Cardiff here New Year's Day you know and you have Pontypool back in the day Neath yeah. you didn't need a ball no, it was in nobody's game plan it was just mad in mass and then you'd have you know that would put us in good stead against the English clubs even though they were good the Harlequins the Leicesters you know but they never quite had that edge that the Welsh clubs had in their glory years so them games were special and the old city comes alive on a, a match day you know the pubs the clubs you know the restaurants everybody's sort of here it's a match day city you know it's a small city it's a it's a it's a traditional club and you know, when you come to the wreck, as a player or as a coach or as a supporter, you get a good experience. And I think, you know, th that's what disappoints me about the form at the moment. Uh, Bath are a, a bit in the doldrums and Bristol have come up a little bit. So uh, well, it must be hard. It, yeah, it's sort of people are sort of talking about things like it's lost its soul a bit, you know. And that, you, you, it takes so long to get that in a, in a club. You know, it's very easily lost and dismissed. But, you know... <laughs> They got some good players here. They got new coach coming in, so you know we just got to look at the bright side and stuff and hope that that will come. Thankfully, there's no relegation in the Premiership this year. Um, but you know, rugby's changed completely from the days. But you know, I won seven cup winners medals here, five league winners medals. You know, it was my step in stone to Southwest Counties, to England, to Lions. You know, so you know, you always got to remember this was the bread and butter for you. Play well here and you go farther. And they still, uh, even though they're not doing that well, there's a couple of young players that are, are doing quite well. Steve Ajomo's boys being yeah, playing. Yeah, players. Isn't it funny isn't it, how things go on? Yeah. Players I played with, Phil de Glanville, his son's doing well. Steve Ajomo doing really well. You know, so it's, um, it's, it's good like that, you know. Um, but, you know, you still see some great internationals down here. Um, and, of course, we're coming up to international season as well. Six nations coming up. Um, I can't wait, to be honest with you. I love blue years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when we go away to play the blues, i.e. Scotland, France and Italy. You know, Edinburgh, Paris, uh, Rome. Great weekends to go away, you know, with your mates, with your wives. With, just to see the rugby. That's the excuse, but it's eating, drinking 
mixing with like-minded people. Oh, yeah, I love it. I we, love it. We, we like the Blues home in Wales because yeah, it's a good chance to, to get three home wins. But, you know, having said that, with the form of France, particularly with oh. the, the World Cup on the horizon... Would you, would you agree with me? I think France, with their young side, they've been building for two or three years, let alone their Six Nations, which I think they'll probably be doing very well. Saying that, Ireland will have something. Scotland's good now. England are always going to be there. Wales are never beat, you know, never give up and get beaten. Um, maybe Italy might struggle. But I actually think the next Northern Hemisphere side to win the World Cup might be France. In, in France, in their own World Cup, it's a big chance for them. Isn't it? It, it is a big chance. I, I just, the only concern... As you know, the French temperament is, will they peak a little bit early? Yeah. And when the pressure comes on, we all know that the Southern Hemisphere sides, they peak at World Cups, Cooch, don't they? You know, that's yeah. for sure. And New Zealand will be smarting after their recent tour up here. The North lost to Ireland, lost to France. But I think you're right. I think the side's young enough. It's growing enough. They've got huge strength in depth. Ireland as well, to be fair. Yeah. Great win over the All Blacks. But I think Andy Farrell's doing great stuff. And you see with the provinces in Leinster, Munster, Ulster and Connacht, how those young players are coming through they've got so many to pick from but as we keep saying over the bridge you look at this england squad and i think it's underachieved a little in recent I, times I totally, and agree. Jones. totally agree but he's evolving the squad is there omissions in this six nations squad for well people he's, like he's, he's evolving the squad after they had a disastrous six nations <laughs> with the older ones last year yeah then all of a sudden he's bringing the youngsters but no, on, which is the right it. time to do it yeah, yeah I agree. Now, now is the time to do it i mean it's it's one of the most open six nations i can remember and it's just great for us in wales you know over christmas we couldn't get out and watch rugby matches and yeah. we've just had the restrictions lifted so we're going to be able to see these games now we're going to have a packed principality stadium great atmosphere and this year we've got to go to twickenham mind Yes, I know, I know. I mean, we were very lucky because obviously our first game up is Scotland away in Edinburgh and such a great weekend away, you know, and uh, lots of, anim not animosity as well, but a lot of banter between the Scots and English, especially politically and everything else. So it's always a good good weekend to uh, enjoy yourself. And of course, we were all worried as a business. We thought, oh, of course, mm. nobody's going to be able to go yeah. out there. But thankfully now they've relaxed yeah. it and everything's getting on an even kill and and they'll be hard side to beat though for England it'd be a big test for them right at the start so. they, they, they're coming up the rails you know Gregor Townsend and Steve Tandy the other coach yeah. off the back of coaching the Lions as well there were a, a number of Scots in that Lions squad um, and I fancy their chances Edinburgh and Glasgow are going quite well it's always yeah, difficult and, and they've they got to set forwards now yeah where before England would just just sort of manhandle them a bit yeah. you know even back to my days playing Scotland with Dean Richards we just have enough yeah. upper strength to just say well yeah. you run about and ruck well but, but now they've got to set forwards it can do yeah. well what was your going into the championship coach what were your feelings like at this time now we're, we're what barely two weeks away from the first game training is going to be quite intense because you want to be picked in that first yeah, game but yeah. you know what were your feelings like leading up to the championship and, and what was your your most favorite game was it Scotland away was it Wales at home what was it I, I, I liked all of them but I always liked France and, and it's simply because well, I, I like playing Wells because the atmosphere in Wells. Mm. Let's not be, you know, beat around a bus. And they, they, they usually had a bit of a thumbprint on us, no matter how good we were. You know, my father being Wells, God bless him, used to say to me, Gareth, I, I hope you get man of the match, but Wells win. <laughs> you know, it never happened both ways. You know, <laughs> Wells always, always won. I mean, I never got man of the match. But I, I always liked playing France because back in my little era of Six Nations, whoever won the France-England game, tended to yeah. win the championship yeah. you know and I, I've I had a couple of bad experiences of France where we've gone over we've been quite close at half time mm. and then San André or Blanco just sort of decided to do something wow. a bit willy-nilly but fantastic and beat us by sort of 20 points in the end of the yeah. game so one of my favorite games and I forgot to pick it it has always been you always remember your first game Australia but France at Twickenham Will Carlin sort of scored a loot one uh, Andy Robinson scored as well an old teammate yeah. of him here uh, and we beat them funny 11 nil, 11 nil. but <laughs> get that anymore, but, but, but for a while the French had a, a bit of a yeah. an upper hand so for us to beat them at Twickenham never 11 nil. I played against Pascal on darts oh yeah who I beat, was, beat was pub in uh, yeah, Barrett's. Barrett's beautiful right, steakhouse yeah. Yeah. yeah so same here yeah. and uh you know, he's he was uh, he was a uh, him and Garraway yeah. were monsters. Yeah. You know, could never get an upper hand, but we did well on that day. Uh, so I remember that as well. But uh, you know, again, but just walking around the wreck here, you know, 
it's a beautiful ground to play at. The atmosphere is brilliant, which is a bit like the Principality or the Millennium or what I call it, the old, you yeah. know, uh, the old, the old oh, ground, yeah. the old, old Arms Park. Stadium, Arms Park. No, you know, there's always an atmosphere. They're always on top of you, especially with that roof yeah. post. Well, we, we were in danger just a few weeks ago, Kuch, of playing our games behind closed doors. Because or in uh, England, maybe. Uh, or in England, maybe. And you can imagine the Welsh public, but thankfully... That's been lifted now when we get to play. You know, we've got to Ireland first, and let's hope the restrictions are lifted in Dublin so our guys can travel and we get a crowd there. That'll, that won't be easy. Then we have Scotland at home. So you could do us a favour there and beat, <laughs> yeah. us up in, beat them yeah. up in Murrayfield. But you're right, it's a special day in Cardiff because there are very few international stadiums that are right within the city. You spill out from the stadium. Straight into straight the bars into and the clubs the bars, and the atmosphere. Straight yeah. into the bars. We've the got France. France on a Friday night at eight o'clock. Oh my oh, God! Look out! Cardiff you know, is going to be up a your bleak. daughters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But, but that's it, that's the lovely thing about Six Nations because tickets aren't easy to come by no, now. No, you know, and and uh, it, it's it's great to know that you can still go and watch yeah. a game through through us or somebody else. But the atmosphere is in the Six Nation. It's still the tournament to watch. We um, in in Wales, we've just had a BBC Wales production a series called Slammed, and it was uh, sort of reenact. It was going through the history of. Um, uh, Wales in the doldrums under Steve Hansen, then Mike Ruddup come in and we won our first Grand Slam in yeah. 27 years. I was really fortunate, I was part of the backroom staff in 2005 because we had quite a lot of, of Ospreys, they were just coming through then. Yeah, you've done and, a lot to develop a well, lot of great international I was, players, so I was really all credit lucky, to you. But the, 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 what you're saying about the atmosphere, I was in the box, the coaching box, when Gavin Henson kicked that kick. He played down here as well. Yeah, he kicked that kick uh, in 2005 to beat England. Of course, he made that tackle on Matthew Tate. Who we'd never heard of yeah. since, really. Th then he met Charlotte Church that, that night, night, I think. <laughs> That's yeah. another story. Another but, good weekend in Cardiff. But that it? night was just unbelievable. Going back to the Vale Resort, the team hotel with the team, Mike Ruddock got his guitar out and played about 100 songs through the night. Of course, all Welsh guys want to want to beat England, but yeah. it's more than that now. With France being so good, Ireland being so good, Scotland coming up the rails, three home games, we can't wait. Yeah, I understand that, and it could go either way. Yeah, could, I mean, it could be a complete. I, I think apart from Italy, it's the most competitive Six Nations I can I can remember because yeah. everyone can beat everybody else on their day. So it's going to be, yeah, it's, it's it's one to look forward to. So predictions, sticky neck up. If you has it got a neck in there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's getting bigger actually. Um, or my head's getting lower. Um, <laughs> I actually, I would like to say England, uh, and a part of me says England, but I still think you know this French side. You know, the scrum half. They got big back row. They scrummage okay. They got flair outside on Tamak. I just think they're going to be a side to beat. You know? I, I I tend to agree with you. I think this French side have learned to win away as well. So they, yeah, they have. It's not like the old days when know, they'd go away, and you lose, win your homes. Yeah, yeah. you know, and the I fluffy. Think, I think that could be the difference. The fact that England have to travel, but you know, <laughs> let's not let's not discount <laughs> Ireland. Unfortunately for us in Wales, we're missing a lot of senior players. I was saying this last year, mate, but we ended up winning the Six Nations. I know, but for a couple of red cards, I suppose. But still, we did. Yeah, it. but you, what I get about the Welsh is. They never say die. They always no. believed that they were going to win, and 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 I think that goes a long way of belief. And and okay, it's always saying a couple of red cards inside should have beat Wells. The fact is, they didn't. They didn't. You know, and we could have done a grand slam. We I, could, I, could have beaten France. I've played at Cardiff Arms Park, where without being rude to the Wells team of that day, England were twice, maybe three times better. Is that when you tried to beat us all up? Yeah, and we lost <laughs> all track. We just tried to manhandle you instead of playing rugby. And consequently, you, you beat us, quite rightly so, deservedly so. So you, you never, never know. And uh, I think for England, they need a good start against Scotland away. That would be a very tough. If they come through that one comfortably, then I think it could be the decider in Paris. But, um, you know, you, you never know. No. Well, never I, know. As for us, I think... Looking at our squad, the form of our regions, I think we'd be happy with, with three home wins. Travelling to Dublin, first up, big ask. Always going to Twickenham is a big ask. Never say never, but I, you know, I think if most world supporters are honest, we're looking for a bit of improvement, some young players to get blooded, um, and then hopefully come the summer tours, we'll have some of the, the cavalry back. Because what you've also got to do is a countdown to World Cup. You've got, um, far. You, you've got this Six Nations, you've got uh, basically summer tours um, we'll talk about a bit of them later on 
and then you've got really World Cup. So oh. if you're going to make changes to coaches, to yeah. players, youngsters coming up. Now's the time. Now is the time. It's imperative. It's no good leaving it a youngster and giving him a World Cup. You've got to get him two or three games in big crowds. You know, players perform under different circumstances. And I've played with some great players who didn't particularly train well, didn't, you know, but when they got on the pitch. And what a World Cup coach. Oh. France is so close for us here. Yeah. British and a beautiful country. <coughs> beautiful country. So many different parts of France. Yeah. All the, the home nations going over there. Off the back of Japan, where we were, what a World Cup that was. What a trip we had with all the supporters. Didn't think it could get any better. Well, France will look at that one day and yeah. go, do you know what? We've had all these COVID problems. We need to make this a brilliant World Cup. And it's going to be, I can't wait. We're going. Because I think, oh, definitely I'm going. In fact, you're, <laughs> me and you's going to get her. We're going to get her. <laughs> um, and I think what the French need to do as well is not just make it about the games. Do a little bit like the Japanese did. Make it a cultural thing. Yeah. You know, Jap the J Japan is such a different mix to what we are in this sort of northern hemisphere, this, this in Europe particularly. But France has got so much history yeah. and beauty. You know, I think they need to sort of, or we as well, need to encourage people to get out of Paris, yeah. get down to the beautiful parts and see the games. You know, England, for example, got games in Marseille. Yeah. You know, and Nice. Yeah. You know, what a beautiful same, part of the world. Same for us in Wales. It's not ideal for the team because they've got to travel around France. Not that it's as big as, you know, some of the other countries. But, you know, if you're a supporter, I think we go to Bordeaux, Nice, oh, Nantes and Lyon. Oh, oh, my gosh. You know, if we manage to get the quarter final as well, you might get up to Paris. I mean, goodness me, if you're a fan. Oh, it's beautiful. What a trip. Yeah, it would absolutely. Be. And uh, as much drink and food as you can have. Um, rugby, like minded. And, you know, there's a lot of bits and pieces about the French at the moment, you know, usually from Downing Street. In, but, you know, the French love rugby. They love people coming over. They love showing off their country, you know, to the point of being like, you know, we're much yeah. better than you. But that's a part of the yeah. joy. Yeah. That's a bit of fun. You're going to get the weather, the food, the red wine, of course, you know. And, you know, as you say, different regions of France have a different outlook of, of rugby. And do you agree with me that I am so fed up the Northern Hemisphere only winning one World Cup. And I know I'm not saying it because it's England, but we should be... And, you know, never before the Southern Hemisphere and the Northern Hemisphere sides been closer. I mean, Ireland against our, uh, New Zealand this yeah, year. Yeah. You know, I just think that if we're going to win another World Cup, you know, and I hope it's England, and I'm sure you hope it's Wells, yeah. uh, and if it's not them, I hope it's another Northern Hemisphere side because we just got to wrestle it, make it a bit cleaner. I, I think so. Look, New Zealand are always the favourites. South Africa are going to be there, thereabouts. You know, Australia have had some doldrums, but they picked back up, you know, we yeah. saw in the autumn. I don't think there's a better time now. Ireland are in there. France, most definitely with home advantage. England, if Eddie can get his squad right and evolve that squad in time, yeah. will be a big, big force. So let's hope. Yeah. So, Coach, Venetor on the Six Nations and trips, it becomes synonymous now. What have you got planned for the supporters? Well, I mean, Scotland's fully booked. You know, it's brilliant at Edinburgh. We've got Andy Nicol helping us out up there and stuff. But then straight after, the week after, we go to Rome. I mean, what a brilliant weekend that is. Friday to the Monday, we've got a chartered flight going out of Birmingham, our own flight, so all our own customers on it, yeah. which will be great. So we can get that atmosphere right from the minute you arrive in the airport. Yeah. You're not then going off and meeting people over there. You're getting together straight from the start, you know, England supporters. Um, and we fly straight from Birmingham straight into Rome. And then, you know, we've got nice three days there, you know. Good hotels, four or five star, right in the middle, everything's walking. Great. And, and around the stadium there in Rome, oh. you've got that atmosphere. All the Veneto people will be together enjoying, mingling with the other supporters. The Italians love it. So the atmosphere will be fantastic and the weather will be good. Yeah, it will. And the Italian anthem is always great. Oh, it's the best. After the game, I always love the Italy one because... It's a, it, you know, we walk back together, so we stop in bars away. And Rome's the sort of place where, you know as well as I do, you've been there with us, that there's always another little alleyway that yeah. you go up and think, oh, look at that Let's little... Let's try that. Oh, look at that little, uh, little restaurant, little bistro, little bar, somewhere to the south side, bit of bread, balsamic, oh, cold the, beer. Parma it, ham, oh, yeah. Parmesan cheese. <laughs> it's all that. there, isn't it? It's all there. But yeah, so it's Rome, so that's brilliant. And then, of course, we've got Paris, which is, you know, which are, I oh, think... Le Crunch. Well, the Le Crunch. All your star. So again, we've, you know, got our charter your star out we go you were all on you know we're all on your star having a bit of fun having a drink get off at paris met at paris into your good hotels and the weekend starts again with rugby being the, the center spot of it so even though i'm welsh can i come 
Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> you, you, are, you, you are Welsh, but you're, you're adopted, same adopted. as I am adopted well, Welsh. I am adopted. But, uh, yeah, so it's, it should be a great, great, great season for us. And uh, it's great. And if England can produce some goods and get up to that last game, you know, being a decider, you know, you've not only just got the good fun, you've also got the excitement. You know, Rome is nice because, with the greatest respect, we should beat Rome. Uh, Rome, we should beat Italy. Uh, so you can relax a bit and enjoy yourself rather than being too nervous about the game on the match day. You can get out and see it. And Rome is one of the great European capitals of the world. You know? it, 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 it's a good place to have Italy, with all due respect to them, isn't it? Is that if you can get off to a good start in England, then to have that, not a guaranteed win we know, but they should win, certainly on paper, that momentum, as you will know, is so important in a six. Well, especially if they got somebody who's got a slight injury that they want for the French game. It, you, they can afford to put somebody from their strength and depth squad to sort of take over for that. That's the game, to play them a couple of people to keep people fresh for the next game, which will be the decider, hopefully. But that could be changed with Scotland doing some damage and certainly Wells doing some damage. Well, let's hope so. But for England, who are the key players? Eddie's mixed his squad up a little bit. Who are the key players for you if they are to do it? Well, I, I still think um, somebody like Courtney Laws, who came back from, I think, I mean, everybody says Courtney Laws, he had a great start to his career, and then he sort of become, I hate to say a journalism, but he just become somebody of the squad. But then he went on that Lions tour to South Africa, and I think he was one of the man, one outstanding. And he stood up in against the DNA of the, the South Africans who love to wrestle and fight and, and arm wrestle. And I think he'll need, he'll need to be big and strong, and I'd, I'd like to see him. But really, it all depends on who Eddie picks. You know, they'll have a Tojo somewhere there doing that, and of course, who he's going to pick his captain. Because, you know, in England, there's a lot of English supporters saying Marcus Smith have done so much now, he's got to play. Yeah. But then what does he do with Ford? Yeah. Or what does he do with his captain, yeah. you know, Farrell? You know, does he move him to centre or does he not? So I think England, in a way... Some of their problems may arise from off the field, yeah. i.e. selection. And get right. Because you know, you've coached at the top level, the top level, mm -hmm. you know, both, both international and in, 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 in uh, club, in provincial rugby. You know, it's not just what players do, it's putting the right players in the selection. right Selection is the biggest thing that coaches yeah. fall down on or become brilliant. Right. Jack Rao down here, he didn't really tell me how to scrummage <laughs> or where to put me foot. Yeah. But what he did is he picked players in the right position it complemented each other and I think Jones have got a big big year especially after the disappointing Six Nations last year yeah. so he needs to get every decision spot on I agree I think selection well you you live and die by it as a coach and yeah. Eddie might have just got it wrong in in recent times you know yeah. might, might not have reached that final or that win in whatever well, well last year he, he, he sort of stuck stuck with his tried and trusted Volopolas and you know it didn't work no. So, uh, who's going to play at eight? You've got Sam Simmons, Alex Dombrant, Curry, he's picked there before. Who's going to play there? Well, I mean, I would pick the Arlequins boy who's yeah, been in Dombrant. outstanding form. You know, and, and especially as Simmons can play, blind, you know, he can play on the... on the Great bench player as well. Oh, yeah, you know. Um, but then you've got to make room for Courtney Laws, but it might be Courtney Laws has moved up into the second row. But then you lose a little bit of that, um, his dynamic tackling, his yeah. presence elsewhere. So... You know, it, it, it's he's he's really has got some problems, really, in a way of selection, which he would say that's a good, healthy way. But you know, it can be yeah. a bit awkward as well. Yeah. What about front row? Your your area of expertise. Well, I think Ellis Gens have deserved it. Now he's just round the park. You know, we all know that scrummaging wise, he can be found wanting. But around the park, he's the perfect modern day player. You know, and Ty Ted Sinclair as well. And, of course, they'll be playing at Bristol together next year. So I can't see much changing um, from Sinclair. But if he's against the scrummage inside, he might just go for the old Warhouse Joe Marler, who is still, in England, the best scrummage, loose head scrummager. You know, and Harlequins are proving that, you know. Um, and he's proving that. Yeah. You know, I've seen him and done some commentary a couple of games in recently. You know, Harlequins versus Bristol. Marler against Sinclair. Only one winner. Marler. Marler. Yeah. Uh, might not run around as much as Sinclair, but does the business. And, you know, Eddie Jones will be thinking he's in the squad. He's been brought into the squad. Maybe in France, he might just need that platform. 
you know, you, you, it's it's decisions, decisisons. Yeah, the proof's in the pudding, and uh, they, I don't think there's any scrum threat. half is a big problem. Scrum half, although Youngs has been playing really, really well. He's yeah. got a couple of youngsters in there. Harry Randall, you know, uh, crowd favourite. Yeah. Uh, young, Sorry. sprightly, very sharp. Ten is the issue. When we have a similar problem in Wales, we've just named Daniel Bigger as captain. Yeah. Who I'm, I'm absolutely delighted about that. I've obviously coached him. I know him really well. But we've also picked four outside halves in the squad, Coach. So yeah. if Daniel's the captain, you assume he's going to play. And that leaves three outside halves. We may have a couple covering a fullback. But we've got a lot of injuries. So uh, not quite in the same position as England. But see, you're also thinking, again, we mentioned it earlier about World Cup. You know, Bigger, I think, will be there for the World Cup. Yeah. But Will Young's. You know, you're talking about another season half. People are talking about his age. You know, will they need a younger Harry Randall to come in or somebody else? So, you know, these coaches will have not just... It's a very thin balance in that. They've got to win a World Cup to keep their jobs and to keep things momentum going. But they've got to bring youngsters on for a World Cup that's coming up. So, uh, all this will be playing in their minds. So, selection for me in his Six Nations could be the answer. In a way, somebody like Scotland, and not so much Ireland, but Scotland who have got their side, and they've got five decent replacements, yeah. six. It they, picks itself. It picks itself. Yeah. So, so, so the, the, you know, Gregor Townsend, I'm going to worry about, yeah. oh my God, who's sort of, he can tweak it a bit. All he's worried about is performance. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, and that's, that's a big weight off his... Uh, Unlike England, I learned the same. So much strength in depth. You look at Leinster, won by 89 points against a depleted Montpellier side, but, you know, Munster, Alistair and Connacht have gone really well. You know, yeah. Andy Farrell, what side is he going to pick? It's going to be a tough... But it is, you know, having that World Cup to look <laughs> forward to, all of a sudden the Six Nations, which you want to win yeah. and you want to get momentum, becomes a little bit of, let's try him. Personally, as a Welsh guy, I'd like to see Marcus Smith play a 10. Yeah, we, know what, we know what... As an Englishman, I totally agree. Yeah, we want to see some exciting stuff from him. And Don Brandt at eight, they play well together at Harlequins. Let's get him in the England side and have a little look. I, I agree with you. I mean, of course, um, if he's playing, then you have got different options as well when he, when he does play and you can have all you want on the bench to come and change the game because rather than game plan A and only you need different people to play different games but whatever happens it's going to be a great Six Nations and uh, I for one can't wait to get to Scotland Paris in in, um, in Rome you, you enjoy it I will. Like <laughs> well Sean we've touched Six Nations everything else but of course coming out of the World Cup Summer tours are really important more than ever this summer. They um, are. And with COVID and everything else, yeah. they really want to just sort of gel that side together. Yeah. And we've got some good tours, haven't we? Wells to South Africa, is it? Yeah, well, it's a big tour for three tests in South Africa. Of course, we had the British and Irish Lions tour last summer. Um, you know, world champions. You know, and can, I, and can I say on that, sorry to butt in, but the Lions went ahead, but without, yeah. without fans, yeah. which was such a shame because the Lions are about touring it's about the tourists it's a great great thing so there's lots of people out there especially Welsh obviously they wanted to go down and see the beautiful country of South Africa the safari parts the Drakensbergs the Garden Route Cape Town all that now they've got their chance Wells are playing there uh, don't forget you've got the South African supporters who were deprived of seeing uh, the yeah, Lions yeah, yeah, as well so yeah. they, they are hungry for, for international rugby and they're going to get it with Wales and you know I think Wales will, will have some, some senior boys back hopefully Justin Tipperick Alan Wynn and the likes so you know it could be a competitive test series off the back of, of the Six Nations but make no bones about it I've played like you in South Africa I've coached I've been on holiday there it's a fantastic country. It's a brilliant rugby country. People talk about New Zealand, yes, Australia and Argentina and so on, but you go to South Africa, there's no time difference, uh, hour. It's a 10 hour flight or so. You've got great food and drink, which is cheap as chips. Oh, okay. And it's rugby country, yeah, full stop, and a beautiful set of scenery. So you've got a Cape Town, Durban, Johannesburg. No matter where you go, it's fantastic. And you know, as, as rugby-minded as the uh, Afrikaners are and the South Africans are in terms of uh, how, how abrupt they are, they are great rugby people. And I, I think the world supporters are in for a brilliant time. Oh, full of hospitality. And you can understand how Africa, South Africa, became beloved. Because yeah. to me, whenever I go there, there's always another valley, another cliff, yeah. another something to see. And you just go, yeah. wow, and your jaw drops. Yeah. You know, The rugby on the pitch will be brutal. It'd be brutal, so yeah. the, Wel the Welsh will have to stand up to their very workmanlike manful yeah. pack but once you're there as yeah. you say 
It is, oh. it's, it's so cheap with the rand. Well, uh, the steaks are unbelievable if you're non-vegetarian. Uh, the beers, you'll be drinking Castle and Lion Lager probably and, and other notable uh, uh, beer products. But, you know, you have Brais with Borvos, which oh, is, is yeah. completely unique in South Africa. But, of course, then the, the scenery, you, you know, you get to go to Table Mountain and, and Robin Island if you can, you know, False Bay and all of the Stellenbosch area and the wine regions are down, mm -hmm. down south. All the beaches up in East London and, and uh, Port Elizabeth and Durban are fantastic. Yeah, it's a great country. It, it, it's magnificent. And, of course, for us Welsh, you can go to Rock's Drift. Yeah, of course. Yes. yes. Come on. Go with tear in your eye. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but what about England? You get to go to Australia. No, yeah, uh, again, another great country. You, you know. played there. Yeah. You toured there. Lions Many and England. Times, yeah, I even went with this with club. We were Bath. You know, I went there as vice captain at Bath. We took there and we played in the Far East and in, in Australia. And I think... You know, I think Australia, again, is another diverse country. You know, mm. you can be, you know, in Queensland and you've got an hour, you know, to the east, you've got the Barrier Reef and an hour to the right, you've got tropical, you know, yeah. rainforest. And then a little bit farther up, out, you've got skiing. Yeah. And you've got Sydney, great harbour cities, ah. you know, in Melbourne and they've got Perth on the other side, yeah. which is just beautiful with Fremantle. Yeah. So you've got all the, the, the nuts and bolts for a holiday, let alone a yeah. tour. Uh, and, and so it, England will want to test themselves against Australia because out of all the sort of Southern Hemisphere, Sean, I think South Africa and New Zealand will be tough nuts on a summer tour down there. Mm. England will fancy their chances against yeah. an Australia side that is rebuilding a bit. They're a bit flaky up front, um, still play some beautiful stuff. Mm. Uh, you know, Hooper's beginning to get to the end. Mm. So England will be wanting, will be relishing to go down there. So mm. the games will be very competitive, yeah. you know, and, and to, to watch the Australians who are very one-eyed, oh. you know, yellow, yeah. yellow and green, uh, and with the English there, it's... Uh, and after the ashes, it could be quite <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> Revenge could, for the ashes. It could be quite nice to get down there yeah. in, and give them a bit of um, a bit of a going over. I thought another thing that we've experienced uh, touring down in Australia at that time of year is you can have an opportunity to see other sports. So yeah. you'll, you'll have Aussie rules. There'll be rugby league going on. Fanatical. Yeah, you know, there'll be all sorts of, of, of things you, you can do. So, yeah, pretty envious going down to Australia. And then there's the Scotland team going to Argentina. Now, we've both been there. I... I was lucky enough to commentate on the uh, under twenties world championship out in Argentina. Went to Rosario, uh, been to Buenos Aires. Now there's another rugby mad country, and you'll get the best steaks you ever ever get in your oh, life. Oh, you don't want to be a vegetarian in oh. Buenos Aires or Argentina. You ask for anything vegetarian, they say, there's, there's a salad bar over there, mate. That's <laughs> about it. Pick what you want, a bit of tomato. You know, it is a steak steak area, but uh, but the Argentinian. The, the, They've done quite well since they've yeah. come into sort of playing the top boys all the time. And and what surprises me is that in, back in our day, it was very much a pack or eight and pack. Yeah. Now they play some lovely yeah. stuff. R lovely football. They've yeah. got some great outside backs, nines and tens control. Still have a little bit of that steely grit up front. Really tough proposition in their own backyard. So that's a difficult one for Scotland, but not as difficult as the Irish who have to go to New Zealand, having beaten them uh, last autumn. Yeah, but we've both identified that Ireland have got a really good chance for the Six Nations. And if they do well in the Six Nations, you've got to say they've got a good chance to do a good performance in the World Cup. So what better chance have they got to play in a New Zealand side that are obviously top notch, but it's a New Zealand side that I think the Northern Hemisphere know can be beaten now. Yeah. Ireland will do well against New Zealand. They beat them in Dublin. You know, other sides have been beating them a little bit more consistently now. And New Zealand sort of, you know, Mike Tyson unbeatable until he got knocked down. And then all of a sudden, oh, we're Hello. Living, You know, and I think that little bit of yeah. invincibility has got to be built back up yeah. in New Zealand. New Zealand will be trying to do it against Ireland. Ireland will fancy their chances, yeah. you know, a bit. A bit quietly confident, well, but they'll, have a, they'll I, have a chance. I think the coaching team's under pressure in New Zealand as well. And yeah. you know what it's like having been in New Zealand. We, we've been down on trips. Is that if they aren't playing up to scratch, it's the coach and the players. Oh. They get it from their, their own their supporters. Press. I mean, you get in a yeah. taxi and they know more about rugby than you do. It's so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but what a lovely country again. From North Ireland to South Ireland, another country which has got so much going on. Yeah. So much to do and see and experience in, in world sort of experiences. So it'd be tough for the Irish, but there'd be, there'd be Irish there, you know, fancying their chances. So great summer tours, but in your experience, Coach, as a player and with Venator and all the, all the times you've been on tour, what can our clients expect on all of those summer tours other than the great scenery and a bit of rugby? Well, I think the first thing is comradeship. 
you know, and a tour. I, from from being in a rugby team and being on a tour, you know, toured all over the world playing, it's about being together. And that's not being together in each other's pockets. That means that if just say three or four of you, you can go off and have your meal and get your freedom. But it's coming together in the common cause, which is supporting your team. You know, so, you know, for example, the South Africans, you know, the Welsh will be sticking together. They'll be doing everything together, but they'll be going off doing their own stuff because some people want to see Rorts Drift. Yeah. Some people want to go out, you know, and do different things and see Cape Town and different stuff. But they know that they're going to come together in the red for the match days and everything else. And that's when the thrill comes, yeah. you know, you're getting your transfer to the gate, you're going to the game, you're sat together, you're... You're a team as well as the team you're supporting. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things about touring with Venator or, or being on tours like that is you make friends for life. Yeah, you do. You make friends for life. And some of my best friends I've never played with, never, they weren't even rugby players, but they supported rugby. And I've got to know them, you know, with that same thing in common, watching watching your sport. And it, it's, it's fantastic. And, uh, you know, so you're seeing the food and drink, you're seeing the, the sights, you're, you're going to great restaurants, you're, you're mixing with people, like-minded people, and you're watching sport. It's top level. What could be better? Well, my experience with Venator is exactly that, Cooch. Great to see you, Pop. Cheers, mate. All the best. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, it's we've done it before, haven't yeah. it? Yeah.